to say, you know, right. it, okay. we're a little bit reluctant to say, yep, you can have it for free. Say, we're going to have, there's going to be some charge involved. In I understand. Mr. Patterson. I think it's also recognition there's a lot more administrative overhead in terms of just keeping track of all of this and, and, and keeping up with the, the meetings of the special events working group. Uh, you know, I don't think we're They're all dollars. volunteers, aren't they? No. They're not? No, they're all department heads in, in, in the town. These are not volunteers. These are town staff people. Uh, everybody on that committee is a staff person? Right. Uh, Correct. Okay. I understand. I get a second? I second Oh, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Motion, Thank second. You. Any further Thank discussion? You. All those in favor say aye. 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 Closed. None. The ayes have it for $300. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a mark. Mark. Thank you for that auction. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. And next is a request for a permit fee waiver for the Arts Falmouth for the Jazz Stroll. I don't have anything from Arts Falmouth. Did I miss it? Well, I, if we don't have a new packet, I would suggest we move that on until next, our next meeting. Yeah, okay. Isn't that coming up soon? Does it matter? Yeah, I was going to have about the same thing. Timing wise? Yeah, if we, I don't know if it matters, they could owe us or something. Uh, I think we're okay on the, I think, yeah, I think we, you, can, you can handle it to your meeting we on can. the 20th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can they can always withhold payment. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, next is the off-premise signs for the Paul White Road race. This is the 39th year of the race. Yeah. And this is, well, I move the approval. Second. Motion and second to approve the Paul White Road, sign, road race signs. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Patterson? No, I was just going to say it's a neighborhood race. It's, uh, pretty much just in North Falmouth, so I, it's not like it's uh, going down Main Street or Surf Drive. Okay. Second is a request for sign variance for two special event signs in the Falmouth Baptist Church. They're creative. Uh, I move approval. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Next is to announce the third quarter meeting schedule for 2016. Uh, we do have the strategic planning retreat for next Monday at 6 p.m. at Highfield Hall. Uh, this time I'll also announce that the planning board is having a meeting with the Conservation Commission on June 15th. I talked to Jim Fox about this meeting. Uh, we can, if we think we all want to be there for that, uh, we can post it as a regular meeting. But what I told Jim is that we would be there as spectators if we wanted to do that, uh, that we would not really be holding a meeting unless they had something they want to address a question to us. But if we wanted to post it as a meeting, we could. I would open the meeting, and we'd sit there and listen, and then adjourn the meeting, but not really take any action. Um, if only two of us think we're going to be there, there's no reason to do so. But. I just wanted to bring this to the board as to whether you want us to post that as an official board meeting and so we can all attend because I think it would be inappropriate for us to attend this meeting or more than uh, two of us to attend without it posting as an official meeting. Ms. Brown? Um, I, I'd like to attend and participate. Does that come within your agreement or not? Uh, they really have issues that they want to discuss between themselves before they come to us for further you know, to actually take some real action. It's just they want to discuss what action items the planning board can get with direction from the Conservation Commission. And then we would later be having a meeting on that. Um, I think for us to be there and listen and hear what they say. That's you, the limit. Okay. Would I, would I suggest to Jim that uh, in respect of what they wanted to do. Okay. Mr. Herbst? Why don't we just authorize our the liaisons to those two organizations to go and that way that's only two and it's not a quorum 
That's certainly an option. I wasn't sure how many people were interested in making sure they got there. Plus we haven't we haven't, we haven't appointed all of the, the yeah, reappointed liaisons yet, so I don't have the list in front of me, but I mean, I know we must have liaisons to the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. When I was actually suggesting it at our strategic meeting, review meeting on the 13th, that that would be another time we actually would reappoint or determine all of that. So, okay. Um, the Conservation Commission uh, is um, Mr. Patterson, and uh, I'm the Planning Board representative. It's what it is right now. Okay. So that is another option, Mr. Patterson. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say, I, one of the things I'd like to see us do more is this a joint meeting with the other boards. I, I feel like boards go off on their own separate ways. They don't necessarily get the input that the other boards are actually getting. You know, I, I'm concerned about the whole initiative toward trying to develop more community housing, you know. Um, I hear test, uh, deliberation coming out of the ZBA that's quite different from what we hear in, in, the, in the board. I saw, you know, the ZBA's comments about the accessory apartment, and I'm looking at some of the comments, and they don't match up with what I've been hearing from, from, the, planning. from the planning right. board. And so I, I feel like we're pulling in different directions, and we have, we're making different assumptions about what the needs of the town are. And I really feel like we need to do a little bit more of the joint meeting kind of opportunity and have truly joint deliberation where we can raise thoughts and hear everybody and have everybody else hear those thoughts and questions. Um, so I, I just would like to advocate for not necessarily this particular issue of coastal resiliency, but many of the other issues that we're trying to deal with as separate boards and try to get us more toward a consensus of what's in the best interest of the town. You know, I, 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 I'm uncomfortable with what I feel are boards going in different directions because they perceive the needs of the towns to be different. I guess I would follow up on that, and I think different boards, um, I think, have a different perspective or a different, they come at it, um, challenges, you know, with sort of a different viewpoint. Where I'm concerned is I just think that we have um, a lot of different boards and a lot of different committees that become sort of insular sometimes. And so there's a duplication of work at times where other boards have already done it. So I think in the, um, as well as sort of that open communication and getting on the same page, I think it's more efficient if there's more communication. So I would, I would certainly, um, you know, I would, was planning on going to this meeting. I think as a board, um, I think there's a lot of value in, in doing that and in having that, that communication be something that happens on a more regular basis. So I would agree with Sam, maybe from a slightly different perspective, but with your, your sentiments. So I should post it as a meeting, a meeting of the board. And if we have only two people there, we won't have a quorum, it won't start. If we have three, we can open the meeting officially. Well, I, I think the one thing I would like to see is make sure that, that, that the selectmen have an opportunity to participate in the deliberation. Because I, I think in some cases, um, who participates is kind of tightly controlled in some of the boards. And I think we ought to have the opportunity to at least provide input and ask questions um, at, at this meeting with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. I don't think that's that often. Well, that's, but if we ask that it be a joint meeting, right? With the chair that was my question. It just didn't work out that way. But maybe in the future that would make sense. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I, mean, I don't mind going and listening, but I think we would all benefit if it was if the selectmen got an opportunity to participate in the deliberation. I will express that viewpoint. That was not what uh, was a, I was able to get an agreement on, but I will push again that we would love to be able to be more active participants. If, if I might say, I mean, I last week, and I was going to mention this in my selectmen's report, but I, I participated in, in three different meetings, all dealing with coastal resilience. Now, I'm bringing in information from the state level, the federal level, uh, our local county level of resources. There wasn't anybody from the planning board in attendance of those meetings. There were town staff at both of them, but they're not participating in these deliberations. So I, I don't feel like we're sharing the information that we're gleaning as individuals very efficiently if we don't have more of an open dialogue and deliberation about the issues that the town is facing. Well, I was certainly posted as a meeting, and 
see what more direction I can give uh, the Planning and Road Conservation Commission. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I ask a question about the month of June? Yep. Um, with what's being discussed, if, if my notes are correct, um, the board will be meeting on four straight Mondays and adding a Wednesday for five meetings in the month of June. I'm just wondering if there's any interest on the part of the board in not meeting on the 20th so you have a Monday open as opposed to four consecutive Mondays. I have a lot of interest in that. <laughs> no complaints here. I'm, I'm not saying you need to do one thing. I'm just because yeah. uh, tonight, you know, tonight the, the board said let's meet on the 27th to make that hearing for the uh, Verdian Cape Verdian Club. Yeah. But the 20th, I don't know that you have any mandatory hearings on that night, and perhaps you would there'd be an opportunity to have one Monday be open if that would be the. Well, Doug, Doug, you said you couldn't be here. I will not be here on the 20th, so I would uh, Correct. be very supportive of saying that the, we will not meet on the 20th, but we will be meeting on the 27th. We would then not be meeting on the July 4th, at least not officially here. Right. Maybe out in the water somewhere on the beach. Would you meet meeting the 27th off the 4th and have conceivably alternate Mondays if you care to on, in July? Well, I, I'm speaking as one of the newer, uh, one of the two new people on, on this Cape Verdean situation, I think it's absolutely essential that the three incumbent selectmen be available for the, for that, for that particular hearing. And the 27th uh, hearing. to accomplish that. Yeah. That's I mean, the 27th. I, I, that's on the 27th. That's given. That, yeah. That's definitely. Okay. But but you would have, you would be having two consecutive business meetings on the 20th and the 27th, um, which uh, my belief is that you can handle business in one night, one or the other, and the 27th is the one you've already set. So perhaps the board would be interested in having a Monday off on the 20th, which would be the only Monday you have off in June, if you would do that. And certainly, if we and if we can do the liaison assignments at the strategic meeting, right. that was the only Next thing I was felt, sort of feeling was a little bit. I want to get that done, so we'll take care of that. So we won't meet on the 20th. We will meet on the 27th. We will not meet on the July 4th. We will meet on the 11th. I would propose we not meet the 18th and meet the 25th, and then revisit our schedule uh, when we see how business goes about whether we want to continue with the. Uh, every other week, or whether we want to meet more often. Mm -hmm. Let's not do. Did that. you say do you meet on seven twenty-five? Yes, we meet at seven eleven and seven twenty-five, but not on the eighteenth. Yep. And six twenty-seven is going to be a regular meeting, so we yeah. obviously intend full business beyond the correct. Yes. Of, uh, the Cape Green. Yep. There's correct. some advantage in combining that with a normal business meeting. You're right. going to be here for that hearing. Yeah. Uh, and it would be very convenient to have a full business meeting if you care to. Yep. So the only the only two dates we're not going to meet are six twenty and seven four. And seven eighteen. And seven eighteen. And seven eighteen, okay. And I don't know if it's gonna matter, but the first week of August I will be on vacation, so I won't be around that week. But it doesn't stop anything from that. If you go within every other week cycle, your first meeting in August would be August eighth. Yeah, good. But depending on what the board, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, you said let's hold on that and um, see how it looks to the board in July. That's what I'd like to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay individual selectmen's reports. Mr. Herbst? Yes, yeah, Sam and I both uh, attended a uh, presentation on substance abuse done by the uh, Recovery Without Walls organization, and I uh, came away with two, I thought, pretty interesting uh, uh, items on that. One was that the, the use of acupuncture is being incorporated in the, uh, the treatment for substance abuse. And, uh, and the uh, Recovery Without Walls is actually using that. And also the, la the, the, the most disappointing portion was that the majority of the people speaking at the panel felt as though that it was a very complicated issue of dealing with 
substance abuse and recovery of people who are involved with that, and that there was no really one solution. Acupuncture would would have been, as I recall, Sam, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, it was sort of like a, 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 a ancillary part of the treatment, and it was if if, if it was available, uh, it cost money, of course. Anyway, I, it was a very informative thing, but I, I didn't come away feeling all that good about the, 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 the success rate and the opportunities of these organizations to try and get these people off of substance abuse. It was a little depressing, but somewhat encouraging. status report on the Friends of Knobskill Line. Uh, they're moving forward rapidly. They'd actually sent out an RFP for architects to come and take a look at renovation work. Um, and they've interviewed two architects already that we interviewed on the third this week. Um, anyway, they're very actively moving forward. And um, yeah, they have access to the buildings now. And they're organizing projects to do things like painting fences and such. Uh, so that you heard that, I think, from uh, Brian Nickerson uh, two weeks ago. Um, but things starting to really ramp up, uh, including fundraising. Anybody that's interested, you can go on the website, Friends of Knopska Light, and make a contribution, but there's going to be a, a fair amount of money that's going to have to be raised to do the considerable renovation to this so historic lighthouse. Um, went to the uh, FCTV uh, annual meeting um, where uh, Andy Dufresne was recognized for his uh, contributions to Falmouth over many, many years. It was really a great um, event. Um, the Memorial Day service that we all participated in was uh, a little damp, but other than that, um, a, a real testimony to the town's recognition of the contributions of our veterans. And I certainly was glad to be there and be able to participate in that. Um, I did mention that I went to three workshops last week. Uh, one was put on by the Laquoit Bay National Estuary Research Reserve, um, and um, uh, and actually uh, the association association for the prevention of, uh, for the preservation of Cape Cod also piggybacked on that. But we had uh, experts from FEMA and MEMA and the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, all kinds of federal agencies there, basically helping us get a hold of how we're going to have to move forward as a, as a community in the future. Uh, on Thursday, uh, Congressman Keating actually organized a, 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 a uh, sem seminar, I guess you'd say, or workshop uh, to emphasize the importance of a regional approach to implementing the community rating sy system, which is a way that we can implement some of the coastal resiliency measures and get credit for it, which extends to our um, various flood, plan, uh, flood policy holders, and they'll get discounts on their premiums. Uh, it is going to cost us administratively, but in a way, it is helping us manage the risks and uh, improving basically our controls. We're already doing a lot of this, and the state building codes actually impose requirements on what kind of renovations you can do or new building you can do in flood areas. But, uh, Congressman Keating, Bill Keating is basically reaching out there and trying to encourage people to work together regionally. And we're lucky because uh, uh, our Barstool uh, Cooperative Extension Service has employed an agent who is really recognized. I'm, I'm amazed at how much respect she gets. But uh, Shannon Jarbo is a highly respected expert in this community rating system. Uh, comes here from having previously worked uh, but very knowledgeable, and I attended a workshop where she actually was preparing people to earn a certified floodplain manager um, qualification, which is something we're going to eventually have to have. have. Um, I would say that um, Bob Shea from our GIS, he's our GIS manager, participated in two of those, and uh, Ray Jack was at one of them. Mm -hmm. So our town staff is participating in it and looking for opportunities to make this an efficient process. So I'm optimistic that we're going to find ways to handle this. Um, we still have a 
uh, flood mitigate or excuse me a hazard mitigation plan that has to be completed but I understand we've contracted for that to, to, to be done by an outside contract which is really in the right direction we have resources in Cape Cod Commission as well as through uh, Shannon Jarbo of the property extension service um, had the uh, pleasure of participating in the uh, police department's uh, Citizens Academy graduation and they have now graduated 472 citizens through that program over the last three or four years, which is really kind of neat. And to listen to each one of the graduates talk about what they got out of the program was really a, a great endorsement of the efforts that our police are making and educating our citizens and is the kind of support work and, and services that they provide to them. It was kind of a, a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, next I went to the um, Volunteers in Public Schools Feast of Falmouth, which was held at Mahoney's. I thoroughly recommend it. It's a $20, and you get to eat about all you can, and you get the highlights of about 20 different restaurants throughout Falmouth that come in and, and give you a taste of what they have to offer in their individual restaurants. It's great fun, and you just meet all kinds of people from the, the community, and you won't go away hungry. I can guarantee you that. Uh, I went to the Falmouth High School graduation on Saturday. I, the tickets came to us kind of late, so I can appreciate why people, but they actually had reserved seats for all of them. So uh, if you want to go and see something that really is uplifting and see those happy faces of the parents and, and the graduates, and I thought particularly noteworthy was Nancy Taylor, our new superintendent, who recognized these graduates because she was the principal at Lawrence when these students were coming through Lawrence. So here she is seeing them. I've gone all through the high school now. And here they are getting their diplomas. And you could just see her face lighting up as each one of those students came up and she got a chance to actually shake their hands and present them. But it, was, it was just kind of neat to see her relate to these students individually and not just be, you know, another bureaucrat passing diplomas out. So I'll just mention it. And the last thing I want to mention was just today. I went to the Lawrence Windows um, replacement uh, project. That uh, project is on schedule. You remember uh, Nick Lowell saying, we haven't screwed it up yet at the town meeting. Well, I can say that so far, it looks like we're going to come out with um, you know, some contingency intact at this point. It's still early. Uh, work should begin in, in just uh, two weeks. Uh, where they're going to start demolition before the students are even out, but they're going to start some demo work in the areas of the building, particularly in the gym area. And that project is moving along nicely. And um, Jane Perry's not here, but uh, they will be putting a handicap accessible door next to the gym where the ramp is, where somebody can actually hit the button and the door will open. But during the day when schools are there, you're going to have to get permission to come in. And so the only the off if the office acknowledges the person's presence and gives them the opportunity to open door will it work. So they'll have the option to turn the handicap accessibility on and off. But anyway, uh, so I can give you a very positive report on that project. Uh, it's moving along very nicely. They, they have an architect and an operator, uh, uh, owner's project manager that they've been on board for quite some time, but now they've just added a clerk of the works as the contractor work is beginning to get be on site, literally all the time the work's being done and looking out for the town of town's interests. That's it. Megan? Just briefly, um, Sue and I met this week with the subcommittee on senior center service programming. Programming, <laughs> yes. Programming. So um, we were able to, to meet, and it's a really just a great group of folks who I think are um, really committed to trying to make some progress in a very small window. Um, and we were able to um, get some work done at the initial meeting and start to put together um, an agenda and really a plan of action for the next few weeks and what we expect to get done. So um, feeling, I think, positive that we're going to be able to um, drill down into some of the, the, the information that we are then hopefully going to be able to present back to um, the board and in a very, hopefully a very short period of time. Well, it has to be a short period of time. But, um, so I think it was a successful meeting and um, really certainly want to thank all the folks who participated because it's a really dedicated group of individuals. Both staff and also yes. the original site selection committee and, mm -hmm. you know, great expertise. Mm -hmm. Do you expect we'll have from BHNA your report for the 27th? Mm -hmm. Where are we here in Heather? No. 27th. No, mid-June, mid-July. Okay. Yeah. 
If, are you also? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just had a quick thing to mention. I um, was in the audience when Heather made an excellent presentation with Sharon Jarbo mm -hmm. regarding um, possible future project on restoring some of Chappaqua Beach and really a lot of outreach to the community with very initial um, concepts and, and just to really get some feedback. So. I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I thought it was a very good meeting. There's it was. There will be some. Field. Oh, thank Leslie you. Fields, thank you. yes. Right. Um, right. There will be some important threshold issues that the board will have to be involved with probably late winter, early um, spring next year, um, relative to the level of engagement from stakeholders in the Chappaqua area, um, how much, what the expectations of the board might be for any possible future investment in that property, what you, you'll need to think about that a bit. Um, but overall, that was an excellent meeting. There were maybe 70 people there. It was a very, very good turnout. Excellent presentation by Leslie Fields, as usual. Um, and there will be two more uh, in June, uh, two more public meetings. So you'll hear more about it. That's great. And we do have a strategic meeting on Monday. Otherwise, I'd be making a much bigger deal about the fact that this is uh, Heather's last meeting with us. But Heather will be joining us for that meeting on Monday oh, night also. Thank you. I just I think it's very helpful. And I appreciate that she's willing to stick on for that extra day <clears throat> to give us the very important feedback and in insight that we need as we do our strategic plan. Um, also, for the sake of the, our new selectmen, um, this Friday is the meeting of the Cape Cod Selectmen and Counselors Association. It's the 7.30 at the Daniel Webster. It's a brief breakfast, uh, but there's going to be a brief, a briefing there on the, our state auditing process and what have you. Uh, I find these meetings to be very valuable in getting a broader state and local perspective on many, many different issues. So I would encourage you to participate. Oh, and Absolutely. it's close. It's yeah. the closest one. It is the closest It's a good one. breakfast. Yeah. Free food on there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Suso, Tom Anderson's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Heather and I were able to attend the uh, spring meeting of the Massachusetts Municipal Managers uh, organization this past Thursday and part of the day on Friday and that's always a uh, uh, a rewarding uh, and enjoyable conference with a lot of insight uh, I do want to request uh, uh, we had a matter come up um, uh, really just uh, today uh, Public Works Director Ray Jack contacted me um, we had had uh, an opportunity uh, identified through the Cape Cod Commission uh, which would uh, require authorization uh, from the Board of Selectmen to enter into a memorandum of agreement uh, with the Commission uh, for ex uh, potential acceptance of $24,299 in grant funds for two ongoing water quality management related projects. One, oyster, oyster propagation, and the other, other is sediment aeration. The Cape Cod Commission deadline for expending of funds is the end of this month, so June 30th. Uh, very time sensitive uh, notification as I noted just received actually at 4:50 p.m. last Friday June 3rd uh, so really no ability to place it on the normal agenda and with the challenging schedule uh, uh, it's really uh, right as I would say in the town's wheelhouse on existing projects uh, that are underway uh, I know my uh, uh, colleague public works director Ray Jack has recommended that the board favorably consider this uh, I think Ray is, I believe, stuck around a little bit in case you uh, I have, have, uh, uh, may have a question for him. Uh, but I would seek the board's authorization, and again, only because it's this very unusual circumstance, very time sensitive, and right up the town's alley, uh, uh, would I ask for the board's uh, authorization if you're so inclined. What the future funds will require? Uh, it, it requires no future commitment of funds. It would just be expending funds that are now available to the Cape Cod Commission that they would uh, essentially make available to us okay. through a grant that they had already received. And uh, if we, uh, you know, respectfully decline, there's no downside on our part, uh, but it would uh, pay for some projects that we are, are already doing, which yeah. is uh, uh, allow our funds to go much further than they do already. This is funds that expires June 30th. June 30th, correct. Right. And I, I'm the board's representative on that water quality collaborative of the entire Cape. And this is, um, it's really an a excellent opportunity for Falmouth to get funds because with the 
really not much more than a 30-day opportunity. We have every Cape Town scrambling to use this money in time. So I, you know, I really appreciate Ray Jacks um, putting this opportunity together and everyone else that was involved. And I want to make the motion that that the board. Um, What's uh, authorize, authorize the uh, mem me to execute the a memorandum, memorandum of, of understanding. understanding to allow that to go forward. Okay. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Come. Yes, have it. Thank you. I also want to uh, just, uh, and the board is aware of this, but I'll just acknowledge that a letter has been transmitted to the property owners in the Little Pond uh, Sewer Service Area from uh, Wastewater Superintendent Amy Lowell uh, confirming uh, a number of elements related to uh, the permitting process for the Little Pond Sewer Service Area uh, essentially are the online permit applications uh, will begin to be accepted uh, effective uh, next Monday, June 13th. We're, we're very pleased that's going forward and it represents uh, considerable work on the part of many departments and offices in assembling that. And uh, uh, we are asking property owners to make every effort to uh, have that, uh, you know, to respond and have their work underway within the coming year. So again, that's that's the request, and uh, we will be having. Um, there are there's a also a notice in that um, letter about a future meeting. I don't have that date at my fingertips, but we'll be reminding the public about that. And all the property owners have been notified by direct mail. So that is going forward. Also, um, a uh, a question came up about replacement of uh, a. Uh, a shed in the West Falmouth Harbor uh, that's a utility shed that West Falmouth uh, uh, dock reconstruction is essentially completed as the board I think is aware a terrific project that shed has been the replacement of that shed has been delayed slightly because it turns out that shed is now in the velocity zone with the changes in the uh, flood mapping and it requires a little different permitting process uh, the good news is that it, uh, the building code board of appeals um, meeting that is required uh, for them to consider allowing that to go forward. Uh, we're guardedly optimistic. Uh, that's been scheduled. Uh, there's a process for scheduling it. We have to be uh, followed closely. It's been set for next Monday, June 13th at 3.30 p.m. in Town Hall. So that process is underway. Um, I also want to... Um, is that yeah. the state? Uh, no, it's a local board. Oh, it's, it's our zoning board. It's our board own appeals. local... Uh, no, not not our ZBA. Oh, oh, oh. It's a building code of Board of Appeals. Gotcha. So it is uh, yeah. uh, okay. separately appointed and separately ordained. Yeah. Um, also, as uh, has been noted, uh, 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 bitter, bittersweet, uh, my uh, colleague Heather Harper, this is her last formal business meeting here with the board, although thankfully, as Chairman has noted, uh, Heather will be joining us for the uh, upcoming strategic plan re retreat, which we look forward to. Um, and I just want to uh, note as town manager um, uh, what an exceptional uh, record of local public service Heather has had for uh, over two decades and uh, just extraordinary service to the town of Falmouth and, uh, and also to the municipal management profession, which is not as widely known, uh, but those of us who are in the profession do know that. Uh, she's had an, an extraordinary record of service to ICMA, the Massachusetts Municipal Management Association, and other communities. Uh, uh, in the Commonwealth, uh, uh, which has been, you know, again, extraordinary to all of us that have this as our uh, chosen profession. And I just want to say what a privilege it's been to work with a, a professional of Heather's caliber uh, during my uh, all too short uh, four years here. And certainly uh, Heather has worked with uh, my two predecessors as well. So uh, I wish Heather the best of all things uh, to come. And uh, we're I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to work with you for, for a little over four years. And I as well. And, uh, thank just, you, Heather. Uh, I want to take a, a moment to thank all of you and my colleagues uh, in, in the community. Um, I do have notes, so I don't turn into a, a blubbering fool <laughs> in any way. But it's really been a, an honor and a privilege to serve such a beautiful community, um, one of the, I think, the, one of the best in the nation. Um, and I think there's some credits out there that recognize the really superior community that we have. Wonderful quality of life um, for everyone who lives here. We've had a really tremendous opportunity to work for the first town manager and the only town managers in Falmouth, and that is uh, Peter Boyer. And 
Robert Rittenauer and Julian Suso, and they're all just really remarkably different managers and individuals, and I've learned a tremendous amount working with each of them. Um, it's been a, a real joy and pleasure to work with really dedicated and capable staff. There's one of them hanging out, around out there, but truly invested in this community, and I think that's a real hallmark um, of the town of Falmouth, the, the type of professionalism that you get from your staff members here, so it's been a pleasure to work with them. Again, I'm trying to contain myself a bit. Um, and it really is um, with great confidence that I leave that you have really talented people here to, to help continue the, the community in, in meeting all the challenges that will lie ahead of it. Uh, my family and I appreciated the many gestures of support and the really kind words in the last um, few weeks. Um, as well as great wisdom and encouragement. And um, I look forward to supporting all of you um, in the future as a resident and citizen of the town. So thank you all for the great, great opportunity. Mr. Chair, if I just might, uh, just a second. I, I just want to speak for a second about my amazement of a person of such a young age to really have driven and led so, uh, such a myriad of projects that have made Falmouth more sustainable, more beautiful, more economically efficient, and um, it's um, you know it's it's a little bit of a um, you know uh, it's not so <laughs> you're going to still be around is what is what I'm saying. So you won't you won't be too far, and I, I think the um, you you know your your talents will grow even further. So thanks for all you've done, and um, you know look forward to seeing everything else you do in the future. What I've been also <clears throat> most amazed by you, Heather, is how the split between are you driven by being a professional or your passion for the town? And those two things drive you to do your best job always, that you care so much about what, in the best interest of the town and making it the best place, but in the, the right professional way every single time. And that's just been so impressive. So very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Tim. I think I, my first impressions of Heather were in town meeting when I didn't really know her in any other capacity. But I mean, to me, you just, you, you were so articulate in your communication and so convincing in your presentations. You, you know, the, the, the thread of logic that you always put together always impressed me. It was always so convincing. And uh, from my perspective, you know, those are the elements of true leadership. And those, that's the quality that I've always seen in you, and I, I agree with everything everybody else has said, so I'm not going to pile on to those. But uh, just thank you very much for your, all the contributions that you've given to the citizens of this town. And we, we're going to miss you, that's for sure. But we'll still see you next Monday. So. <laughs> next Monday and, and then at the... Uh, at all our parties. Are you going to be at the summit, right? Cape Cod Commission Summit? I imagine I will be there. <laughs> I hope so. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.